Well, that was quite a weekend of football in the Pac-12. We're doing winners and losers as always here on our Monday show, but uh, we also have to ask the question, is UCLA the best team in the Pac-12 right now? Let's go. Our Locked On Pac-12, your daily podcast on the Pac-12 Conference. It's the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Welcome, everybody, to another episode of Locked On Pac-12. I'm your host, Spencer McLaughlin, D1 play-by-play broadcaster. Thank you for making this your first listen or your first view of the day if you're watching on YouTube. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your number one source to stay up to date with the Conference of Champions, which is why, if you haven't already, like, comment, subscribe, wherever you're listening to or watching the show. Thank you to everybody out there who has done so already. And what a week of football that was. Oh, man, so many good games. So much. Stanford and Oregon State. What in the what happened? What was that? We're going to get to that. Does Washington have cause for concern? That's coming later in the show, but we have to lead again with UCLA. Anybody out there was doubting the Bruins or saying, well, hey, maybe look, look, Washington's maybe not as good as, as we thought, which is like eh, kind of true, but not as true as you might think. I, I, I will get to that again later in the show. But anyone who might have had that sort of reservation. I think UCLA kind of put that to bed. And UCLA, I said coming into this year, they were a Pac-12 dark horse contender. But they now look like a legitimate contender. They have arrived. 6-0 and for the first time since 2005. The Bruins are mighty impressive. And I was not impressed with them through the first three weeks of the season. They didn't have a big game on their schedule. They should have rolled three times. Instead, they stumbled against Bowling Green and then came back and and won by a lot. And they needed a game winning field goal, a game winning field goal. Now, granted, South Alabama, I believe, is the reigning Sun Belt champions and the Sun Belt has been pulling more than a few upsets this year. James Madison right now is in the top 25. Appalachian State is in there. So there's some apparently respectable teams in that group of five conference. But at home, it's still not a team UCLA should have taken down to the wire. But now after what they just did to Utah and what they did to Washington, who had been rolling the week before, you look back and go, how in the world did South Alabama keep up with UCLA? How did that happen? Because the Bruins look like a really good team. They have a fifth-year quarterback in Dorian Thompson Robinson, who is playing like a fifth-year quarterback. This guy is so night and day from what he was early in his career when he was a turnover machine who didn't trust his offensive line, who bailed out of the pocket, who ran when he didn't need to. He has grown tremendously. And Chip Kelly deserves a lot of credit for coaching him up. And DTR deserves a ton of credit for putting in the work, putting in the time. And you know what I love about Dorian Thompson Robinson? The UCLA quarterback cares. I see it on that guy's face every time he makes a play. That dude loves being a Bruin for a football program that doesn't have a rich tradition in the last 20 years, that doesn't have the strongest fan support, as we all know. And that guy committed to play there, never left, never even considered leaving, came back for another year, wanted to prove that they could be even better than they were a season ago. And they are off to a 6-0 and start. And yeah, the first four wins, nothing to bat your eyelashes at. Absolutely nothing. And they, like Washington, are going to have to show they can do it on the road. But that is a really good football team. And right now, I would power rate them one slot ahead of USC. Right now, based on what we've seen through the first three weeks, I didn't think I'd be saying that right now. Because the offense was getting off to slow starts. That has completely gone away, and they've elevated their level of play. But how about defensively? That South Alabama game, something I said afterwards was, wait a minute, why in the world Is South Alabama going into the Rose Bowl, great home field advantage or not, and putting up 31 points? You have a new defensive coordinator. Where are the adjustments? Where's the improvement? We've seen it the last couple of weeks. They showed it a little against Colorado, but the Buffs are barely a Power 5 program right now. They They don't have their head coach anymore. Like Nothing is going right there. There's nothing impressive there. But they turned Cam Rising over a couple times. They held Utah, who got a late touchdown, for all intents and purposes, under 30 points when the game really mattered. That's not an easy thing to do. 
the defense, like USC, doesn't need to be great. It doesn't need to be the reason you win. It just can't be the reason you lose. And Bill McGovern, who came from the NFL to be the defensive coordinator after they parted ways with Jerry as as an arrow, is doing a really nice job. And he's got those guys playing hard. They play fast. They're forcing turnovers. They're getting some stops when they need to. They can still, I, I think, improve on third down. But overall, that defense is vastly improved from what it was a season ago. At least that's what they've shown in the last couple of weeks. And right now, I trust USC's defense to be able to force a turnover. But I think UCLA's defense is more reliable over the course of a game to just get stops. Now, USC's defense played well at home this week against Washington State, but the Cougars have been up and down offensively this year, particularly away from Pullman. Do I think it's close? Yes. But right now, UCLA looks like the best team in the Pac-12. Can you say, well, what about USC's offense? USC's offense is amazing. They have a bunch of weapons. I watch UCLA play offense, and nobody in the Pac-12 is slowing them down either. Washington apparently can't stop anybody, but Utah has the best defense in the Pac-12 consistently year in and year out. They couldn't stop UCLA either. So yes, right now, UCLA looks like the best team in the Pac-12, and they are number 11 in the country. And they have a bye this week, so does Oregon, and they beat next week at Autzen Stadium. That should be game day. That should Look at the rest of the college football slate. That game should be game day. Chip Kelly trying to win his first game at Autzen. He's got his best UCLA team. They are red hot. Oregon's been rolling for the last five weeks after that embarrassment in week one against Georgia. A lot of hot, lot of positive things there. And I, I tell you what, Chip Kelly deserves a lot of credit. So does the UCLA administration, straight administration, mind you. Sorry. Got a lot of energy right now. I'm trying to just dial it in. They did not bail on Chip Kelly after two seasons when it wasn't a full turnaround. They didn't bail on him on three. They didn't bail on him after four either because that's when it really started to get there. But in the age of firing coaches who can't turn things around quickly, UCLA has been patient and they are being rewarded for that right now. Is it sustainable to be this sort of team year in and year out? Maybe not because I don't know how many DTRs there are in the world But that's a conversation for another day. UCLA is here right now. Zach Charbonnet is an NFL running back. The offensive line is good. The defense is improved. The weapons are there. And DTR is playing at a really high level. Did you know he's completing over 70% of his passes? Dorian Thompson Robinson. Imagine saying that after watching his freshman and sophomore seasons. One day, that guy's going to complete over 70% of his passes through half a college football season. Pretty remarkable stuff. He has grown a lot, and he's a really good football player. I've sung his praises here on the show, and he has rewarded that particular take. And not every Pac-12 team has supported the way I felt about them going into last week, which which I will get to in, in just a moment. But Dorian Thompson Robinson has grown so much. He's still a tremendous athlete. He's a great player. He is a good leader. He is just someone who cares so deeply about the game of football. He wants to win with this team. And UCLA has moved themselves. With that win over Utah, you knock off the defending Pac-12 champs. You're up 17 late in the fourth quarter, end up winning by 10. You put up 42 points on a Kyle Whittingham coach defense. That's mighty impressive stuff from the Bruins. And yes, right now, they're the best team in the Pac-12. A lot of people going to disagree with that. That's okay. Because I think USC is really good too. But UCLA looks every bit the way I thought they might. And really even beyond how I expect them to be coming into this year. If you want to have your home security figured out, you got to check out Simply Safe. The numbers don't lie in the last decade. Over 4 million people have chosen Simply Safe home security to protect their home. You don't earn the trust of that many people without doing something right at Simply Safe. Your safety is the only thing that matters. They protect you with cutting edge security technology powered by 24-7 professional monitoring agents who always have your back. 
Simply Safe blankets your home in protection with advanced sensors for every room, windows, doors, HD security cameras. They've got everything you need, even hazard sensors that instantly detect fires, floods, and other threats to your home. Customize the perfect system for your home in just a few minutes at simplysafe.com slash locked on college. Save 20% on your Simply Safe security system when you sign up for an interactive monitoring plan and get your first month free. Visit simplysafe.com slash locked on college to learn more. There's no safe like Simply Safe. UCLA football probably still not going to be able to get a sellout crowd in the Rose Bowl at home because that's just the way it seems to be because that was a huge game and they had a good crowd, but are they ever going to sell out the Rose Bowl? Apparently the answer is no. But I tell you what, that UCLA, that UCLA football team is darn good. They are playing some really, really good football right now. They're the biggest winner of week six as we move into our winners and losers segment here on our Monday edition of the show, as is our usual arrangement. Uh, the two other biggest winners, and just for those of you who are new or maybe forgot, there are five distinctions you can get here on a Monday show here on Lockdown Pac-12. Winner, where your fan base should be celebrating in a good mood, enjoy the win, lots of good things to take away, lots of good things to think about going forward. Lean win, where it's like, okay, it's good, but it's nothing spectacular. No opinion which is exactly as it sounds, lean lose where, yeah, this is not really a great outcome or there's a negative trend. And by the way, you can lose and be in the lean win category or you can win and be in the lean lose category. And then to be all the way at the bottom, a full on loser in a given week, you have to lose and you have to really, really be in a place where the fans go, yeah, we got some questions and we got uh, we got some problems right here. So the other two biggest winners in week six in the Pac-12. <laughs> Not the teams you would expect. Uh, first of all, Colorado, big winner in week six. They didn't lose. They stay at 0-5. That's a big, that's a big win for the Buffs right now. And how about Arizona State? Can they win a conference championship? No. Are they going to be over 500? Probably not. But doesn't that just feel good if you're a Sun Devil fan? Washington came in top 25. You have a sparse home crowd. It's looking like the Rose Bowl down there in Tempe. And Sean Aguano gets it done. And they're celebrating. They're celebrating this week. That's why you get the winner's label for Arizona State here in week six. Because I bet you those fans were really celebrating that win. And they should have been. Because there are not going to be a lot of them in 2022. Am I surprised they won that game? Very, very much so. That's going to be the last segment of today's show. But I tell you what, if you're an Arizona State fan, you just enjoy it. You just enjoy it. We'll be talking about that more tomorrow with Richie Bradshaw of Locked on Sun Devils as well. The lean win category. Oregon looked how they should on the road. Much stronger showing away from Watson Stadium than, than what they did in Pullman up against Washington State when they probably should have uh, lost the game and just found a way to win. Oh, speaking of finding a way to win, you know who gets a lean win label this week? Oregon State. Yes, that's right. Did they play a good football game? No. Did they live up to my expectations and go down and just run the ball all over that Stanford team and hold their offense, which I still am not a huge fan of, to you know under 20 points? No, they did not. But you know what Oregon State did on Saturday? They found a way to win. Back to well after dark? Craziness. Madness. Absolute mayhem. Bedlam insanity. I don't know how Oregon State won that game. I understand Jonathan Smith going for two when you score after having been down 14. Analytics say you should do that because you convert 52% of your two-point plays. So if you don't get the first one, the odds say you'll get the second one. And then if you do get the first one, you kick the extra point for the next touchdown you score and you can take the lead. I get that. Their long snapper also apparently was injured, so he wasn't able to to, you know, yeah, they didn't have a backup long snapper where they could feel good about there. So I understand all of that. But man, Jonathan Smith has gone for two a lot in the last couple of years. Why do they not have any two point plays that work? They had that problem against Oregon last year. They went for two when they were down by a bunch, ended up costing them later in the game. They were down 10 in the fourth quarter when they could have been down eight or seven, I, I think, eight or seven, whatever the case may be, one versus two possession game. For some reason, Oregon State goes for it as much as anybody, and just cannot convert a two-point play. I don't know what it is. I don't know what's going on there. I'm also unclear as to what their offense was doing against that Stanford defense that has just not been good this year. They had allowed 40 straight points 
in consecutive weeks. Each of the last three outings, their opponent had been over 40. USC, Washington, Oregon. And Oregon State should have been able to go in there and run the football. And they they, they did with some success, but even with Cole Branson in there, and they've got a lot of quarterback questions right now because Chance Nolan had been struggling, and now he's dealing with an injury. I am surprised that they did not have a, 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 a I just, I'm surprised they didn't have more success. I, I really, really am. And I was wrong about Oregon State going into that game, but I was still right about Stanford because the reason I was confident about the Beavs on the road, Chance Nolan or no Chance Nolan, is Stanford is just not very good. And they found a way to lose that game. And Oregon State said, thank you very much. We'll take some momentum. The Beavs go in the lean win category this week because number one, wins in Corvallis always feel good. Number two, you go through a gauntlet in the first couple of weeks. You're emotionally drained after losing to USC at home in a game you should have won. And then you have to go on the road at Utah the next week. You don't get an easier one like another home game, like a number of other Pac-12 teams have had this season. Or you don't get a Colorado or a Cal or an Arizona State or someone who's much more beatable. No, you have to go and play Utah on the road the following week. Brutal break. And so just finding this win, it feels like Oregon State just has new life, has new momentum. And I think what you saw in that Stanford game, the way, the reason it played out the way it did is Oregon State is probably just feeling kind of drained and feeling down because they are not a team that record-wise should be 0-2 in conference play. But they're not on USC and Utah's level. And if you spaced them out over the course of their conference slate, they probably would have been okay. But they happen to be back-to-back. It's a brutal way to start. But being 1-2 and two right now in league play and 4-2 and two overall with a couple of Mountain West victories, Oregon State has shown some real intestinal fortitude this season. They went on the last play at Fresno State, and they went on basically the last play at Stanford. Do they want to play a better brand of football and get comfortable wins and not need borderline miracles to win? Yeah, they, they, they would. They really, really would. But you know what you need to build as the season goes on? You need momentum. You need good vibes. You need confidence, and that comes from wins. Beavs lean win this week because they found a way to get it done. Another lean winner this week, USC. No cause for major celebration, but you did cover the 12 and a half against Washington State. Wasn't in the Pac-12 prime picks because I wasn't sure how Washington State's offense was going to do. Here's a reason for USC to feel good going forward. I don't think it's you know outright celebratory mode. That's why it's not top tier winner category, but they played a feisty Washington State team. That is a good football team. The offense was fine. Not amazing, but the offense was fine, but the defense was good. They held them to 14 points. An offense that had been starting to find its rhythm in Washington State. Cam Ward had been playing better and better. And USC's defense with Alex Grinch there and all the playmakers they've had this season were not solely reliant on turnovers to be successful. And I think that that is noteworthy. Because that's why I like UCLA more than USC right now. I've seen it more from UCLA where they're not totally relying on the turnovers. They can be UCLA's got the best run defense in the conference right now. USC certainly does not. But that's a step in the right direction for the Trojans. And I think that that is a good sign. So they get a lean win. No opinion this week. Washington State. They played. But that's about what I expected. Kind of hang around. USC pull away late. Trojans are just a better team. And Jake Dickert's doing a lot of really good things. They will win plenty more games this year. But that's kind of about what I expected. And when you do that, that's a no opinion label. Cal, they they had a bye this week, so <laughs> obviously no opinion there. Um, but they got to, you know, sit around for another week with a winning record. And I think that feels pretty good if you're a Bears fan. Um, Arizona, no opinion here. Not a lean win because... They could have played better. Their early fumble was sloppy. Their offense had some good moments, but overall was not able to do enough. The defense is still a big problem, but we knew that going into the game. So if I'm an Arizona fan, I look at this game against Oregon and say, I would have liked to have seen them hang around for a little bit longer, but was it a calamity? Was it a disaster? 
given the talent that Oregon has on its roster versus what Arizona has right now in the midst of this rebuild with Jed Fish? The answer is unequivocally no. It is not something to feel really bad about. I don't think it's something to feel good about because the same issues are still there. Oregon ran for over 300 yards. They ran for over 300 yards. Bo Nix at one point was 15 of 17 passing. He finished 20 of 25. Defensively, there's still a ways to go. But we knew that going in. The offense faced one of the more talented, not the best statistically, but certainly from a a player caliber standpoint, one of the best defenses in the conference. There, there's a lot of there's a lot of good players on that Oregon defense. They have not been able to put it all together. And I thought Arizona was going to be able to do a little bit more offensively. But overall, do I feel that different about the Wildcats today than I did before that Oregon game? No, I don't. I think there's still a rebuilding team that is going to be able to win another game or two this season. However, there's there's one drawback for Arizona fans that, that you have to keep in mind, and it's really important, and I know there's several of you out there, and it's important that you hear this point, which I'll tell you about after I remind you that Bet Online is your number one source for football betting info this season. Find all the latest player developments, team matchups, news, podcasts, and in-depth articles and analysis on every game you can find. And as always, Bet Online remains your continued source for all your sport wagering information with live betting and up-to-the-minute scores for every sport out there. The fastest and easiest way to check in on all your favorite games and events, including Major League Baseball. Go Mariners, everybody. MMA boxing, my personal favorite golf. Head to betonline.net or use your mobile device to learn more. Bet online where the game starts. So the thing for Arizona to keep in mind, the schedule is about to be absolutely brutal. You just had Oregon at home. You have Washington on the road this week. You come back home to USC and then you go at Utah at UCLA. It's very possible. Very, very possible that Arizona is about to embark on a five-game losing streak, and they're already one game into it. That's a realistic scenario, unfortunately, for the Wildcats, which really sucks for Arizona fans. If that does end up materializing, I hope to be able to pull an upset in there, but I just don't see it. I still think Utah's a really good team, and you have to play them on the road. I don't think Arizona's defense is going to be able to stop USC or Washington this week. They're back in Seattle, and the Huskies are going to be hungry to prove something. In a minute here, I'm going to kind of double down on my belief in Washington, at least a little bit in 2022. And UCLA looks like the best team in the Pac-12 right now, or at least one of them. And you have to play them on the road. That It's it's just brutal. Oregon State and Arizona, two of the worst scheduling breaks imaginable. But the good news for Wildcat fans is you got to be patient in this rebuild, right? Everybody, I hope, I hope understands that. And Jed Fish, it's well underway. It is well underway. Would you have liked to have gotten a win against Cal to, you know, have four wins right now because that's a more winnable game than the five you're about to play, including Oregon on Saturday? Yes, you would have. But if I told you you're in this position going into this stretch, would you have taken it before the season? I think the answer is yes. And they're going to have a chance to beat Arizona State. And maybe they can pull an upset in there. You could still get to four, may, maybe five wins in 2022. And that would be a wildly successful season. After you had, I don't think I need to remind the Wildcat fans, but maybe for everybody else out there, one win in 2021. Just one. And you're already sitting at three. That's a good place to be. It's just going to be a rough stretch. You got to look for positives, find areas of growth, hope the defense can continue to improve. I guess they haven't really improved a ton, but can hope, hope they can improve, show signs of growth, show signs of uh, maturing and getting better that that you can continue to build upon in the future. Cause it's, it's just a really, really rough stretch that three of their next four are on the road and they're playing in five consecutive weeks, arguably the five best teams in the Pac-12. You can maybe throw Washington State above Washington right now with, with how the Huskies played down in Tempe, but it's it's tough. It's really, really tough. And the Pac-12 is just looking a lot stronger than uh, than we thought it was. So no opinion on Arizona there. Uh, lean lose before I get to the two uh, losers of the weekend. Utah. Now, I thought about putting them in that 
lowest level category of, yeah, it's time to worry. It's time to do this and that. I just think UCLA is a good football team. If you've listened to all of today's show, you know that that's the case. But I think UCLA is playing like the best team in the Pac-12 right now. They've got the offense. They've got the defense. Utah was on the road. Yeah, they were favored. But here's an interesting note. They're coming home against USC this week. Big, big game. Not going to be game day. Probably shouldn't be because Utah's got a two in the loss column. But don't be fooled by that two in the loss column. Because if Utah were 5-1 and one, with the one loss being to UCLA going into this game against USC, would you look at it and say, oh, well, it's clearly going to be USC? Well, would you look at that? Utah is favored in this game. And I'm going to stick with my prediction all week long. I think Utah is going to hand USC their first loss of the season on Saturday against Lincoln Riley's Trojans. Is it disappointing to lose on the road? Yes, it's always disappointing to lose in conference play. And it's the first Pac-12 loss of the season for Utah. I also happen to think it will be the last. I think much like their one and two start last year, this has a chance to kind of invigorate the Utes, get them motivated, play their best brand of football going forward. And I do not see them losing another conference game. Maybe to Oregon at Autzen Stadium, but I still believe in Utah. I just think I don't think this is a matter of if Utah was up here when they won the Pac-12 championship game without Devin Lloyd and a couple other guys. Yeah, they might be here, but I don't think this is UCLA being down here. And I'm sorry for everyone who's listening on podcast, but you'll just have to bear with me. It's not UCLA dropping down or Utah dropping down to UCLA's level. I think this is Utah is still up here and UCLA has just elevated their level of play. We've seen the Bruins play to their level of competition all season long for better or worse. I think they've done that the last couple of weeks. They were able to get a big lead on a red-hot Washington team, and they were able to eventually not have to sweat by the very, very end against a really good Utah team. I still believe in the Utes, but you take a loss, so it's a lean-lose label this week. Okay, is there a concern for Washington right now? Husky fans are probably concerned with defense. That's pretty valid. And they lost a couple of corners from last year, but there's still plenty of talent. They've recruited at a solid level for the last few years, even under Jimmy Lake. And the defense wasn't the problem last year, right? I think part of the optimism for for Husky fans this season was, well, the defense has been good the last several years, so they'll be good again. You know, even though we lost a couple of guys, we've been losing NFL corners for years, bringing them, bringing in new players, replacing them and such, and getting a high level of production. That's very true. But is it as simple for Washington as they are just a different team away from home? I'm going to say the answer is yes right now. Because how else do you answer the question of explaining Washington's differing levels of play against Michigan State versus Arizona State? Is Michigan State as good as we thought? No. Are they a bad team? Also no. Would Michigan State beat Arizona State? Probably. At the very least, it'd be a competitive game. Can we all agree on that? I watched Washington's defense against Michigan State. They ended up allowing, I don't remember the exact final score, but it was a lot of garbage time points for the Spartans. They could not move the ball in Seattle. And meanwhile, Arizona State in Tempe with a backup quarterback for most of the game is able to go up and down the field. Yeah, Penix threw one pick six, unlucky, went off his lineman's helmet, and they run it back the other way. That's still 38 points that Washington allowed to an Arizona State team that has an interim head coach who's never been a Power 5 coordinator even. He was the running backs coach, and he's just filling in. And you got to feel good for the Sun Devils for having their moment in the sun. Well, they have a lot of moments in the sun because they're in Arizona, of course. But for having a moment to celebrate as a football program right now. But if you're Washington, there should be some level of concern defensively. But I really do think, because I watched them play against Stanford at home, and I watched them play against Michigan State at home, and I saw the defense play radically different than what they showed in their two games on the road. Now, UCLA is easily the best offense of the bunch. But that Arizona State team 
is not that good. They played pretty well against USC on the road, sure, but the offense didn't put up that many points. The offense scored, I believe, 25 on the road against USC, and USC's defense has been hit or miss this year. They've been relying on the turnovers. And so I really think I'm considering putting Washington back in the Pac-12 prime picks this week, which definitely go into the uh, the lean-lose categories, another one and two showing. Second week in a row, my favorite pick, UCLA this week, Washington State a week ago hits, and then the other two miss. The Beavs and, and the Huskies let me down. But based on the evidence we've seen, it may just be that Washington's defense needs to feed off the home energy. Because how else do you explain that showing against Michigan State at home on the defensive side of the ball, Washington's offense is fine. Went down, scored 38 points on the road. I don't care who you're playing. 38 points on the road in conference play, you're doing something right. Was it perfect? No. But the offense is not the problem. You score 38 points, you should win the football game nine and a half times out of 10. This apparently is the halftime for the Huskies because the defense could not get a stop. Their tackling was poor. There were a couple of busted coverages, or I, I guess the better way to perhaps put it is guys just getting beat really badly in one-on-one situations. But that wasn't happening against Michigan State. And the Spartans probably have better athletes top to bottom than Arizona State does. At the very least, it's comparable. So they're coming back home this week and have a chance to show that the first four weeks of the season were not a fluke because they're playing Arizona. There are more than two touchdown favor right now. We'll continue to monitor the line as the week goes on. But I think there's there's cause for pause, but not yet concern for Washington. Yes, that is a bad loss. No doubt. There is no doubt about it. Not going to try and sugarcoat that. That That's a bad loss for Washington. They should not lose that game. But they have more home games on their schedule. And you can improve as the season goes on. They're still sitting at four and two this year. They're on track to be at least a a 7-8 win team for a program that won four a season ago. Turnarounds can take time. I thought it would take longer than it clearly has coming into this year, but now it feels like they're going backwards. But maybe they just need a little bit of home cooking. I suspect that that's the case for the Huskies. I appreciate everyone listening. See you next time. And right before I forget, Stanford just keeps finding a way to lose games. Unquestioned loser of the week. They, they, they can't beat an FBS team. I, nothing's going right in Stanford. They can't win game. They, I, it felt like they gave that game away. Oregon State, t- Oregon State took it. However you want to interpret whatever happened on the farm on Saturday night. Pac-12 after dark. Appreciate everyone listening. See you next time. Have a wonderful rest of your day.